They are from Morocco. Well, they are right now qualified for the World Cup. They will be playing over there in Australia, New Zealand for the next World Cup as they qualify from their own quarterfinal game against Botswana. Congrats to the host nation, Morocco, doing that business well there. We won that game. And also looking at Zambia. Zambia, they were able to do it via penalty shootout after playing one of draw against Senegal. Good one for the Shepolopolo ladies. They were able to do it. Congrats to Zambia and also Morocco for qualifying for the World Cup. Well, good one. And welcome you on the show. 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adeni Aji Shafe. We'll be talking about uh, this particular uh, incident that has to do with uh, Zambia and also Morocco as they were able to do well in this competition. Well, Zambia, Morocco qualify for 2023. Uh, women World Cup that's coming up in Australia and also in New Zealand. That's our topic right now as we're looking at that particular uh, situation of there. Well, like I said earlier, congrats to the two teams as we were able to win. Morocco, they show class. Host nation over there in Morocco, showing the reason why they are one of the first to be reckoned when it comes to women football in Africa, and now they've made it to the World Cup. And also Zambia. Zambia really tried their best, and right now, for the first time in the entire history of that nation, they'll be going to the Mundial of Women and also qualifying for the uh, semi-final of the tournament. Talking about women, AFCON, a big, a big one there for Shea Polo. And we are celebrating the fact that alongside Morocco, they've deemed it fit and they've qualified. Well, Super Falcons will be doing their own business today in the evening. And we hope our ladies will actually fly ahead of the landings of uh, Cameroon in that game. That is a dual die affair. A big match there between the two teams, rival, and right now they know what is at stake. Talking about Super Falcons. Now, let's uh, come back to the studio as we talk about a particular uh, situation that has to do with Nigeria. It's very common. A lot of footballers here and there, both on the streets, in the cities, villages, anywhere you go to, you see footballers training week in, week out, trying to see how they can better their lot in that particular sport of football. We have to look at how uh, a lot of scouts across Nigeria get this footballer outside Nigeria. Also, how academies are run and the business of football. Uh, we always say sports is business and fitness. I have with me in the studio two gentlemen who will be at least uh, talking about uh, uh, football scouting business in Nigeria. That will be our focus for this hour. I have with me my immediate left hand side is uh, Akwehe. Good to have you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here on your show. Good one there. Yeah. And also I have uh, Moses Max. Good to be here. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Good one there. Now let's look at uh, the topic I just mentioned, football scouting business in Nigeria. That has been a big one because why we have a lot of academies scattered across Nigeria, both in the cities, but even in the villages. You see a lot of people trying to get boys that are playing. You can get them that, okay, this particular player, that's a particular talent, either a goalkeeper, a midfielder, a defender, a striker, they can do something different, and you spot that particular difference, you are picking on them, they call that scouting. Now let's start with uh, Akwehe there, where we'll be looking at, okay, uh, when, we, when we talk about scouting in Nigeria, you as a coach, you've been a scout, you've been everything, tell us about it. Okay, I will say that uh, scouting is just that aspect, you know, of uh, looking out for talent, you know, and then recommending the talent. Mm. Uh, it's a very, very uh, important uh, position when we talk about management or administration in football. So it is a, a part of football that should never be ignored. You know, we know that in this part of the world, uh, scouting is not uh, done perfectly like it is done out there. But there are few of us that live out there. We live, uh, we live abroad and uh, for over 20 years, and we know how it is possible to make those systems that work over there also work uh, for Nigerians. Mm. So the aspect of scouting is uh, not actually going to where there are only good players, you know. Uh, you also go to uh, rural areas, you look at the talent that has something special. And uh, people that are, are supposed to actually uh, scout are uh, special expert, ex experts, you know, in that particular uh, field of scouting. So someone can sit here uh, with you watching a game you know, uh, locals playing, but they would not know the special thing uh, that the scout would come and then watch and pick. Mm -hmm. Then at times when the scouts come, that's why the whites, at times when we bring them, you know, we bring them into the country, they will pick a player that you will say, eh? What did you see in this player? <laughs> yeah, I see this one. <laughs> they will tell you yes. And that player will go and sign ahead of the player that you're looking at 
as the established as, player. Thank you. Hmm. So that's how uh, the aspect of scouting works. There are different things, you know, that have to be put in place to make, you know, uh, us also have a, a very good uh, scouting, uh, successful scouting exercises. And when you talk about also the youth level, you know, uh, the scouting is not done uh, properly. We all agree with that. There are no uh, questions. The coach, uh, they just, uh, people select players and then push them, you know, and then try to like uh, lobby in like that. And like they don't have a special uh, scouting team, you know, for our youth teams. Those are things that uh, I know that uh, the NFF is also working towards. Mm -hmm. Now, but when you talk about grassroots and scouting, I would say that uh, Nigeria is one of the most successful uh, country mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to that currently ongoing on record. You know, there are, I think tourism, you know, uh, is making good money, but they are not speaking about it. Uh, people flood into Nigeria week in and week out to scout players, mm -hmm. to look for local players, to look for grassroots players, go out there, expose them. So it is a business that is currently ongoing. Mm. And it is very important that uh, Nigerians just know how that business is supposed to be done, you know, uh, properly. Good one there. Yeah. We've been talking with uh, Austin Apehe, well, he's the chairman of Galaxy Football Academy. And we have to look at that particular sector in Nigerian football, scouting. A lot of people are wondering, well, who is a scout? Is he boy scout? Is he? <laughs> <laughs> At times, it's always very uh, interesting. When, like you said, that uh, you see some uh, white scout or even some foreign scout, they pick a player that you don't expect them to pick, and mm -hmm. such player will still go places. And now, let me turn to you, Max Moses, being uh, a Canadian based uh, coach, your experience uh, <laughs> concerning Nigeria, go, go, just like you mentioned, yeah. we have diverse talent in Africa, in Nigeria, but the way we run it, the way we run the business of football is quite different from the way it's run outside. In fact, it's as if we are even taking it with levity. Tell us something about this. Yes, thank you very much. Mm. Um, when it comes to coaching, uh, especially here in Africa, uh, for instance, when I uh, uh, started coaching uh, in Galaxy, people are like, some of the older coaches, they're like, you're too young to be here, right? Now, I, I tell these people, it's, it's not about you being young. It's about what you have upstairs. That's right. Right. So uh, that's what people here forget to understand. You know, I, I've met a lot of coaches that are a lot older. And when they try to explain to me some certain, like say, drills, and I'm like, this is way back. <laughs> so but I don't want to, like, uh, put it out there for him to feel bad. But I, I still listen, and then I sometimes bring up that same topic and then put it in a way that he would not, you know, get uh, maybe upset or stuff like that. So coaching here has been a step up. It is good. We are progressing. Mm -hmm. But it is, there's, there's a lot of difference, a lot of difference when it comes to coaching here. Can you mention one or two differences that at least are very cogent? Well, for instance, uh, uh, when the game is going on, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, tactical changes, we... Oftentimes, uh, most coaches here make that mistake. They just feel that when they do this, you know, sometimes they get lucky and then... <laughs> they pick the right yes, player. Uh, in. <laughs> exactly. But when you've been coached out there or when you uh, have done like a whole lot of research, you, you know when you read the game properly, you know who, uh, what player to bring in that can do exactly exact thing what you want him to go and do there. That's correct. It's mm. no game reading. Mm. You know. So, yeah. yes, on that uh, regard, I think um, that's what it is. Okay, now we've been looking at uh, scouting business in Nigeria because it's a big, it's a huge business. Now, when it comes to uh, Nigeria, now we have a lot of academies here and there. So it's as if it's just like, oh, something opened people's eyes. Although we've had it for a long time, but yes. now it's almost like the in thing in town or cities. But... Uh, what could have been the reason why now people are just rushing into academies here and there? Okay, I would say that uh, it's a very good question. You know, we've seen that uh, uh, the business is becoming uh, wider and wider. And uh, what are we doing? Where are we, you know, uh, at Nigeria? I tell you that uh, it's on record that Nigeria is uh, uh, the largest uh, country that has uh, foreign players, you know, in the world playing, you know, out of their own country. You know, Africa, we're number one. Then uh, in the world, we're top five. Mm. So I think that's a very good one. You can, uh, almost every country you go to, you find a Nigerian over there. Uh, so it is a very good thing for us 
uh, but uh, when we talk about uh, the, uh, doing the business aspect of, uh, of this job, you know, we are totally backwards. We're not organized. You know, we agree to that, that we are not organized. But I say I give some respect, you know, to uh, our grassroots uh, football. You know, the amateur things are not like it even used to be. Mm. But they are exporting. We are exporting players abroad from left and right. So how do we come together and try to coordinate ourselves, organize it correctly, you know, and then be able to sell players or even uh, upgrade the value of our players? Mm. You know, I was disappointed one time when I brought in... Uh, uh, my friends uh, who are big guys in China, you know, to Nigeria for the first time. They were telling me, yeah, we heard that if we come to Nigeria, yeah, the players are free. We have free player from Nigeria. That's what I hear. I hear free player. <laughs> but you tell me, no, 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 no free player. I said, no, the person lied to you. We don't sell players for free. You don't come here and get players free. Let us uh, organize. Let us have a, a system. You know, that it's organizing, that, that it's organized, mm. that can also be able to uh, tell these people, look, if you don't, you know, uh, prepare to come and get a grassroots player, at least at this minimum, you know, a price, you wouldn't get these players. Because they are actually making huge money out of these players. When you send them out there, the, the, the academies, most of them benefit nothing. I pity them. When you see my M MOUs, you know, with the, the clubs, a lot of them are shocked. Some guys in the business, they say, oh, me, they try sport business for them. I said, no, <laughs> me, I'm just a truthful person. This academy should benefit. You because know. that's where you pick them from. Yes. So they say, okay, what did they uh, do? They didn't contribute anything, you know, all the monies, you know, I did everything, brought in sponsors like that, like that. How will I give them this percentage, you know? So let's, uh, let's just try to be fair. Let's get organized. And then one time I wrote something, you know, about uh, uh, the, the NFF. Uh, having youth uh, uh, football for academies, a youth football competition for, for, acad for academies. just academies yes. in Nigeria. Yeah, but they are ignoring it. Hmm. And they are also not happy that the academies are selling players. You know, when you talk to the big guys there, they tell you, oh, they, they will say they get academy, this, that, that, uh, left and right, they sell player, this, that, that, but it's nothing. It is actually something. Hmm. Because go on your, the TMS, you know, you will see academies, you know, doing uh, some transfers going on. And then you find out that a lot of transfers are no longer, you know, happening within th these professional teams. You get it? It mm. means that if we organize ourselves well, you know, and have a youth system, you know, that is working, we can actually sell players at a good price. Brazil has done it. It is working. You can't go to Brazil now and pick a player, you know, you see him playing very well, and then you say you pay $100,000. It's not possible. Now it's no longer possible there. We knew that before you can do that 20000 Fifteen thousand dollars, ten thousand. You go to Brazil, you get a player. But it's because they discovered that no man, we have to, you know, upgrade our market value. You know, our mm. grassroots, our grassroots has special players, special talent. When you go to the villages, it's what we have done. You know, in Galaxy, you know, we've gone to villages in different uh, states. So you go there and see talent, you will be shocked. People playing with canvas. When you call for scouting events, you know, in those places, <laughs> what they wear. There's one we found. You know, he had a shot that was just pulling. The game was going on. His shots would go down. All of us would say, oh, you didn't see that boy. And talent. Oh so goodness. currently, uh, the boy were projecting him to become one of a, a superstar, hmm. you know. So it is very possible, you know, when you get organized, then the business aspect, let people know. And I think that we should do that. We know, should today. do that. We've been looking at the focus about football scouting business in Nigeria, where Austin Akwehe and Moses Marx They've been talking concerning that huge investment sector concerning uh, football scouting in Nigeria. We have to do it right. They have to create a system where even the federal government, the NFF, they can earn money, revenue here and there. And also the academies that are breeding these players can also get something. And that's what we're talking about, looking at how to develop Nigerian football via the grassroots system of scouting these players. Now, talking about grassroots football. We've seen situations whereby in Nigeria, uh, a lot of talents in the grass were not seen because of the fact that they are in the interland. They are not being discovered. Yes. What is Galaxy Football Academy doing to go further or further, both sides, to get these players, uh, like having a searchlight, That's to right. get these players that are kind of hidden out? Okay. Maybe well, I should start with Moses Mann. <laughs> Thank you. Good question. Um, uh, recently, uh, before we, we got started, we, um, 
went to a few rural uh, uh, towns and it was unbelievable, you know, to, to find such talented players there. And it's not just that. Some of them, um, they, they, they don't have that opportunity to come to towns. So but before they could get uh, maybe fished out, we would have to go there. Mm. So but some people don't like going to those places. So but we have made it uh, a thing of joy to, you know, to, to, we know that not just the people from town, you know, that needs this opportunity. Other people that are not in town also need this. So, so we have to go there. We went there mm. and we uh, fished out a couple of like very good players. And we've, we've been doing that for the past months now. And currently, uh, um, the boss went to Ogun State, you know, to, to do that same thing. And then afterwards, I think... Ilaro. Ilaro. That's in Ilaro in Ogun yes, State. Yes, yes. So um, I think after that, also, uh, we're thinking of going to Putakot. That's right. You know, in the interiors, not just in the towns. In interiors of River State now. Yes. That's right. Okay. So the, these people have talent. So we want to give everyone that platform to showcase what they have. So um, this is what we love to do. Going you know, into those interlands into those, yes. to search out those talented those players. players. Yes. Now, uh, Austin Akpoehe, looking at what Max just said, I'm sure you want to actually buttress on it more. That's right. Yeah, and uh, also, we're also going to Inugu State. Mm. You know, uh, we let uh, our colleagues, you know, there uh, uh, also enjoy uh, what we're doing. Uh, so, uh, particularly, we're going to Oji, Oji River. We want to visit the place, a <laughs> popular uh, river you guys all know. So, we're uh, going to go and scout players out there mm. and then bring them out and then actually help them, you know, to become professional players. Now, why do this? You know, you guys know that uh, you had friends, you that are uh, ex-professional players mm. or currently playing, you know that they were players that were better than you. You know, when you were studying, that were like super talented, when you struggle to chase the ball, they don't struggle, you know. They just go and bring the ball they down. Do yes. yes. But you find out that they never made it. Hmm. It is because you were opportune. Maybe one of your uncles had a little money. He could send you. You, know, you go out there, go and do trials somewhere else. And they pick you. Thank you. But now we're giving that opportunity to those kind of players. We're coming to you guys. We're going to come, set you right there where you are. Then you show us the talent. When we got to Il uh, Ilaro, you know, the people were shocked. They said, eh? This village. Somebody can come to this village? Yes, you know. Oh. And then we were shocked at what we were seeing, you know, in those villages. So we are also encouraging people. You know, it's uh, capital intensive, mm. you know, but we're encouraging people to uh, try to uh, go out, you know, and search these talents. Let they, in fact, uh, people say that uh, the talent in Nigeria has actually, you know, diminished because it's very hard to find a player like J.J. Uh, uh, Okucha and Kano uh, right now. The players are there, but they are wasting. Hmm. So, so, so for yeah. in a nutshell, now what you are saying that we even have better talents than JJ or Kano. The only thing is that not being able to assess them. Right. That's right. So it is uh, uh, an aspect that we are uh, investing heavily in. That's you Galaxy know, Sports, Sports Academy. Academy. That's, That's what right. they do, going around to get best talent out of Nigeria. At least get them out uh, from the interland, villages, hamlet, where a lot of these talented footballers have not been noticed. Even if they are noticed, nobody gives a hoot about them because of what? They don't know anyone. But right now, this particular academy is doing everything possible to promote these particular Nigerians who are less privileged when it comes to being given that push or being lifted up to showcase their football artistry. We've been looking at football scouting business in Nigeria, and really, that sector really needs to be seen as a huge way of making a lot of profit. And now let's talk about TMS. You mentioned TMS earlier. A lot of people yeah. don't know what is TMS. People go, oh, what is it about? Can oh. you just explain it? Okay, the TMS is uh, the transfer matching system. You know, it's a system that uh, FIFA put forward in order to control uh, transfers that uh, used to go out. It has helped so much. Uh, I am also benefiting from it. I think the FA, the, the NFF is also benefiting from the TMS. Now they are able to control the number of players, you know, that are, are leaving Nigeria, that sign contracts abroad. And then they have a data system that can also keep uh, those uh, contracts, you know, for over years. Mm. So if somebody comes up and says that it's a lie, it's not true, everything is there. The contract of the player when he was, uh, before he came to the club, has to be registered on that TMS, you know. And the club he's going to, the contract also has to be registered. All the parties, you know, have to all put those documents 
in that uh, platform. And it's online. Yes. What is painful is that uh, a lot of Nigerian uh, uh, chair, club chairmen, especially in the NF NFL, don't like that. Hmm. You know, they the are MPFL. Still, yes, they are still beating the system, the, uh, the TMS. So uh, the, uh, the NFF has to work more on that. So that you they know. will not so change players or people that own this, uh, the academies or whoever actually owns own these the players. players. Yes. Mm. So they are trying to do, tr they do transfer still without the TMS. I wonder... Which is wrong. We, yes, we wonder how it's working. It is supposed not to work. Some mm. people know it there, but they just keep silent on it. TMS is a very, very good platform, you know. Now, let me use yeah. that to transfer to Mosix. Now, from what he, he just said, some yeah. people see beat the uh, transfer matching system. Yeah. Uh, how does it work? Because uh, it's at least uh, you need to put this thing online for people to know both buying, uh, the club that is buying, and the selling uh, team or management. And now, according to Akwehe, some people still go behind to try to beat this system just to get this player out so that the profit can actually go to their pocket. You being <laughs> from a place oh, where not, things not are pay. working, they don't even yes. pay. They don't even pay yeah. some yeah, of yes. them. Compare the, comparing this to Canada, where everything works, a, a better climb of uh, how business is done. What can you say about this? Um, it is very different because uh, I, I I had an encounter down here uh, where uh, two parties were involved, and uh, it came to uh, came to signing and. Before you could know, this, there was exchange of, you know, uh, uh, it was a safe, there was going to be a fight. Hmm. So, but because it wasn't done correctly, yeah. you know, but over there, everything is done, you won't even know. Everything is done smoothly, you know, uh, fees that have been paid correctly, on time, and all of that stuff. So, but over here, it is, it is a huge dilemma. So, uh, I'm glad that they, they, they're working on it, uh, it's a work in progress. And, but it's going to take a long time for us to get to that. Uh, uh okay, before I will let you go, our time is up. Uh, uh, Moses Max, what advice will you give to maybe academies, uh, youth out there? Um, I want to tell them that there is an opportunity for them, mm -hmm. that they should never give up uh, on their dreams, that everything that they've all dreamt of, it's possible. And if they can uh, get to us, we're not saying we're the best. We're not saying Galaxy Sports Academy is the best. But we are guaranteed that if you have what it takes, you know, to make a mark or to leave a mark out there, we are here for you. And mm -hmm. we will give you what you want. Good one out there. Now, Coach, uh, rather, uh, <laughs> Chairman, yeah. Galaxy Academy, Austin Akwe here, your at least uh, words to either clubs or players and all that concerning this scouting business. Okay, I want to say that uh, currently Gal Galaxy Sports Academy is uh, organizing a scouting event. You know, we're going around the country. Uh, currently, we're in Lube, you know, the, 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 the area council, uh, uh, sorry, in uh, Kuji. The, uh, the chairman, uh, Honorable Sabo, is uh, working with us and also the, the sports officer there, uh, Eli Elijah Magaji. You know, they are all working with us. So we want to uh, tell you guys out there that uh, our trip that we're preparing for to travel to France, it's open, you know, for all of you guys. You know, you can contact us, you know. We're going around the country where we want people to know what we're doing. We're open people. It's a business that all of you guys will uh, benefit from if you know how it works. Mm. Most especially, you know, Football is money, mm. you know, and it's how you invest in it that you can also get your money. You know, Why you Galaxy know. Academy are actually doing this? Trust TV is also yeah. going to be partners now. <laughs> just have to run That's it right. together because we're projecting you yes. and we have to do this business together. Definitely. That's part of it. Definitely. Media, uh, Scout, all of us, we have to work together. Definitely. Good one there. We've been talking sports on 360 Sport on Trust TV. Well, a wonderful one there. I am Adini Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.